Hello everyone, Denas here with Action VFX. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use our Action VFX Forest Fire stock footage collection to create this forest fire scene in Adobe After Effects. Our forest fire collection have 31 different types of burning trees and foliages, and each of them contain both the fire element and matte texture. So we will explore how to composite with a matte and without one. We will be touching on other collections as well, such as atmospheric smoke and fog, and many others. All of these, including the Forest Fire collection, are available to purchase on actionvfx.com, especially today on our Black Friday sale. More info in the description below. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so this is my plate. So this plate is actually a day to night conversion. So this is the original plate, which is a day. The reason why I'm doing conversion instead of using like a real night scene is because I need the daytime to get a really good track. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to composite the forest fire first without using the mat. Okay, so first I'm going to set this tree on fire. So let's get tracking data for that tree. Let's go to 3D camera here. And then I'm going to grab this point here and create null and camera. So now I have a point that is tracked to that tree. So now I'm going to bring a tree trunk that fits this tree. So I'm going to bring tree trunk number one. And let's see where there it is. And then I'm going to copy the position of that null to this tree trunk. So let's turn it to 3D first. And then instead of manually copying the transformation of this null to the tree trunk, I'm just going to hold shift and then parent our tree trunk to the null. And there we go. Now the tree trunk is automatically sticked to the position of the null. So now I'm just going to set this fire to fit the tree and then I'm going to duplicate and then basically start building up the fire until the entire tree is burning. Okay, perfect. So next, I'm going to set this dried out vines here on fire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a burning asset that is just quite big enough to cover this up. So I'm going to select this small tree number three. There we go. And then let's get a 3D tracking point there. And then I'm going to turn the small tree to 3D and once again, copy the position. Okay, now scale it up. And there we go. We have a fire on our tree. So next, I'm going to add a little bit of fire on this area here. Now, it's a quite difficult to add fire here because, you know, we have a lot of like stuff here. So the fire will probably have to be rotoed and stuff like that. However, thanks to our forest fire asset, we don't need to do that. So what I can do is to actually just drop a branch fire on here and it would automatically mimics the shape of this area. So let's get a tracking data for there and then turn our branch to 3D and pattern it to that null. So if we turn on our night layer, this is what we have. Now it's gonna look even better when it is glowing. So let's continue building up our fire for now. So, so far I have shown you how to composite the fire without using any mats. The mats would actually perfect to deal with stuff like this, where we have a lot of stuff here going on and we're not sure on how to deal with this, whether we want to mask it or we want to cover this with fire. So what we can do to, is to actually cover this with the mat. So we are basically removing this dried out like branches with our own dried out branch. So I'm going to grab this branch number two, both the fire and the mat. There we go. And basically we want to just put it there. So let's get a tracking point for that part and then turn both of these to 3D and once again, parent it to that null. Perfect. However, the problem now, this branch mat doesn't fit with the background because it is too solid black. So let's deal with that. So let's get fractal noise. And then let's turn on our night layer and then let's scale it down and then let's get tint and we're going to select the white to a bright area in the shot and the black point to the dark area in the shot. 
There we go. So now it fits better with the scene. So now I have shown you how to composite the fire using the mat and also without using the mat. Now I'm going to start populating this foreground area of the shot. Okay, so here I have filled a lot of fire on the foreground area of the shot. So let's solo them to see what's going on. Okay, so first I have added a branch on the tree here and I actually didn't use uh, the mat because when we actually add the glow later on this fire branch, it would actually show a little bit more of the branch. So it would be overkill to use the mat. And then here, of course, I made the entire tree here on fire. And here we have our branch here kind of on top of this fire, which is a bit problematic because what I want to do is I want to pre-comp all these fires together and then add a glow. But here we have the branch mat being sandwiched between the trunk fire and its own branch fire. So if I pre-comp the mat to retain the occlusion, it would be affected by the glow of the fire. So I need to find a way to keep the mat in between the fire without it getting pre-comped along with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate the branch here. And then on the duplicate, I'm going to disable all the effects. So now we have this black solid occlusion on our fire. So now what we can do is we can pre-comp this, but first let's turn all the fires into screen. So now we want to pre compose the fire, including the black branch there. And now we see our fire is looking weird because it got offset it. So let's fix it by clicking this collapse transformation tool. There we go. So now this is what we have. And here we have this black branch here, and that is not a problem because what we're going to do is we are going to add solid composite, change it to black. So now everything is black and because now everything is black, we can just turn this into screen. There we go. So now we can add glow without the glow ever affecting the branch. So that's actually not how we're going to do glow. What we're going to do first is we're going to add tint, set it to 80%. And then let's add curve and let's push the highlight and also increase the red and reduce the blue. Now I'm going to add the glow. So let's add glow. And we are going to set this to 15 and glow radius to 400 and then intensity to 0 0.5. And then we're going to set the glow operation, the screen, glow colors to A and B and color looping to south loops. And then we're going to change the color A to something like light orange and the color B to something like darker orange. And then let's duplicate this. And then we are going to change the duplicate, the glow radius to 600. And then let's add another glow. And this time we're going to change the threshold to 90, the radius to 80 and the intensity to 0.2. And then we're going to change the glow operation, the screen. So now we have our fire glow. Okay, so now we have our glow on the foreground fire. Let's disable it. And we are going to start adding fire to the background. So first I want to get a tracking point around here. And then I'm going to grab branch number six, just the fire here. And then I'm going to turn it to 3D. And then of course, parent it to the null. And there we go. Then I want to move it here. And I'm going to scale it up. And boom. Look at how realistic it looks. Even I didn't even add any masking or anything, but this edges here looks really fit in with the background. Just so great. So next I want to add more fire. I'm going to add branch number seven. And I want to put it around here. So let's get a null on that area and then parent our branch into that null and then turn our branch to 3D and parent it into that null. And there we go. So we have a problem just like the fire over here. When I have uh, some really minor like uh, fines and leaves, I would just put the fire on top of it. 
However, the problem with this is that we have a pretty big wood here and also this tree. So we need to mask out our fire. So what I'm going to need is actually a separate layer that will serve as a mat for this tree and also this wood and basically every other tree on the foreground. So thankfully, I already made that earlier, which is this. This is basically just a simple solid layer with a bunch of roto mask that is masking all these trees. So now we can use this mat, put it on top of our branch, and then Luma inverted it. And there we go. So now if we add more fire that is behind the trees, we can just mask it up. So now I'm going to populate the background fire. Okay. So here we have our background fire now populated with a lot of them behind trees. Because when I was building this, I realized what really makes the first fire looks uh, very realistic is the sense of death. And you can get sense of death by basically putting a lot of elements behind something instead of just putting it on the open space. So now let's pre-compose this background fire. All of them. Okay, perfect. So now let's turn on our foreground fire again and actually put it on top. And then I'm going to copy all the glow effects to the background fire and then turn it to screen. And this is what we have. So now I'm going to add another burning tree, but this time I'm going to create an entirely new tree using the trunk mat. So let's get this tree medium number two here, both the fire and the mat. There we go. So now we can see how the mat and the fire has already matched up. So now let's turn them both to 3D and then we're going to scale it up. And then let's add another tree trunk and again, turn it to 3D and let's move it forward just a little bit and scale it up. So now I want to select those two fires and put it on top. And then we are going to pre-compose them, turn on the collapse tool again, and then we are going to add the glow from before. Boom. Let's turn it to screen and it's still a little bit much. So let's reduce it. Let's maybe disable this one. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit more atmosphere. So I'm going to get this lingering fog number two. And then we're going to change it to screen. And then we're going to turn it to 3D and push it back and then scale it up. There we go. Then put it below the close up tree. So now I'm going to add a tint to the fog and we're going to make it something like a bit yellowish. Cool. And then I'm going to add small scale smoke plume, put it here and turn it to 3D again, screen, scale it up and then duplicate it and move it to the side. And then we're going to add another tint to both of the smoke. Okay, great. So the last thing we're going to do is just adding a bunch of particles in the air because it would really help add life to the scene. For example, we can add this falling burning debris to really emphasize that there are something coming off from the burn and then also falling ashes, which is my favorite. It really adds the atmosphere. And then also we have sparks and a couple of embers. And that was the tutorial on how to create forest fire in Adobe After Effects. Of course, in the original shot, I added more fire and also enhanced the color a bit using color grading and a very minor heat distortion to spice it up a bit. Once again, you can purchase our asset on our Black Friday sale today, or if you want to purchase it anytime, you can just visit our website at actionvfx.com. At Action VFX, we provide high quality VFX assets for your VFX needs. We have fire, explosions, energy, and many, many others. You can also sign up for our Action VFX subscription starting at the low cost of $14.99 a month. 
This is the most affordable way to access our library and you can cancel anytime, no contract. Thank you so much for watching, let us know in the comment section below what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see next. And see you next time, bye bye.